Collective, back at it, you already know. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Uh. Like a mother, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. like a mother, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. like a mother, smack at it. Bye up, bye up. All the names you can tell by that thumbnail right there, the craziest Southsider I ever done met, right? Shout out to the Florencia gang right off the top. Um, that'd be crazy boy from Florencia. 13 on the face, he told the F-13 right here. That guy was crazy, right? Um, definitely was with the business. Now, in a menudo style, a direct fashion, um, a lot of people ask me all the time. I get a lot of DMs, a lot of a lot of comments. People ask me, hey, Gunner, who is the craziest uh, Southsider you ever ran into? Now, I ran into a whole gaggle of Southsiders, right? A lot of them. Through my whole life, there's several individuals that have stood out to me. You know, it's not necessarily been one or two. I mean, there's a whole lot of them. I um, mean, every different individual person, doesn't matter where you're from, have a little bit of thug in them. Fox said it right. Um, now, this guy that I'm going to speak on right here, this individual, um, from what I've heard, you know, he's resting in peace. And I can only say prayers for him. Um, we had a good relationship. He was a good bottle. I'm going to give you the rundown. But... Not only because we had a cool relationship and we chopped it up, uh, is he the craziest one I ever met? It's because of what he displayed, the way he was educated, his mentality, the way he carried himself, and some of the incidences I witnessed myself. I could only wonder and only phantom exactly what happened later on in life with them and how he kept that motherfucking ball rolling, right? This guy was different. This guy truly, to me, from my perspective in my lifetime, was one of the hardest, if not the hardest outsider I ever ran into. Wasn't no punk in him. Wasn't no poop butt around him. Wasn't no sucker fish involved with his get down. You know, he was for his barrio. He was for the sword. He was for everything that that entailed. And he carried himself like that. And that to me was a good representative of exactly what his people are and, and what they strive for. Now, being a Norteño and a young Norteño in the Fred C. Nellis and CYA, um, I get there, I pull up, you know, of course I'm aware. You know, I ain't going to lie, man. I would sit here and be remiss and lying, a liar in a fat mouth. Guard! What? I'm lying. I, I, shit, I know. I would be a liar in a fat mouth if I said um, I didn't have a few butterflies floating around in my stomach, right? There was, there was definitely some tension going on when I pulled up there. I was tense. I said, right, so I pull up uh, with several other homeboys, and my whole mindset was, I got to get back up north there. I got to get back home. You know, I got to get back where my family's at, where my homeboys are at, um, where I lay my head. Where I lay my head is home. So, I was kidding. they got me on some motherfucking temptation shit. I'm a papa was a rolling stone, right? They got me rolling stoning down there. I mean, I ain't Mick Jagger. I said, I don't like chorra. So, anyways, I'm kicking back um, on the compa. And I'm kind of surveying the situation. I've told the stories over and over again. We get there, riots happen, fights happen, one-on-ones, um, -on whatever it is, okay? Over due course and time of being there, I start to become adapted to my surroundings. I start to become indoctrinated with a little bit of the Southern Klecha. People my whole life have always told me, hey man, you could have been a Sereno or you act like you're from down South or you dress a certain way or you act a certain way. Um, and that's their perception of me. And that's based on, as a young kid, that's when you're molded. That's when you identify and you kind of adapt to what you see around. You got to understand I was a very young kid, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old, that by this age period, this time, um, you know, I started to wear the baggy pants and, and the Nike Cortezes and baby cuffs and things that you would particularly see down south. That's what I was doing. Um, and all my homeboys were doing the exact same thing. You know, I still got a homeboy from Saho. I ain't going to say his name. But we kick it every once in a while, and he's still, hey, he's still got the cutoff uh, uh, 501s, baby cuffed, creased up, uh, high socks. This is just a get down. It's because of where we were put, where we were placed. This became our stilo, okay? Is it a southern stilo? I mean, if that's what you want to call it, then call it what you will. Um, 
but several individuals that I seen down there, I just liked the way the, the flavor was. I rocked like that. Now, that's neither here nor there. I say that to say this, you know, at the end of the day, each man is his own man. You know, it's not about how you dress or how you look or how many tattoos you have. It's about what's in here and what's in here, the mentality. You know, the mentality, are you willing to go out there and get it for your head thing? Are you willing to stand on your toes 10 feet in the concrete, right, for what you believe in? Or are you going to bow down like the West Side Connect, the gangsters, the killer, and the dog? Then are you going to go down? You know, are you going to say, no, I don't bang no more? Are you going to say, oh, no, no, I never did that. So I was going to my antenna or to what degree? Nah, nah, the wind blows. Okay, you're placed in life wherever you're placed and you have to rock how you rock. Now, upon me being here, I ran into, or being in Nellis, look at this ass I think I'm there again. You know what I mean? Utterly Madhouse, Madison. I ran into a lot of Southsiders. Um, and some, you know, automatically have a perception of, of Northerners when you get there. You know, they didn't, they didn't like us. You know, their whole mindset was, hey, you guys are foreigners to our land. You guys are the other side. Right? You guys are the other side of the coin. You guys are the enemy. Um, and that was quite understandable because we felt the exact same way. We felt like we were being placed, used as ragdolls. Um, it was a big old experiment to throw us to see if we can, uh, uh, you know, get along. You know, my whole intention going there uh, was I don't want to be here. I want to get home. Like I said, I'm going to do whatever it takes to shine the light on me so that way the administration knows, hey, this one, <laughs> he's not going to stop. There was no stop in me, um, but there was also no stop in Crazy Boy from Florencia. Okay, now traditionally Florencia is one of the bigger gangs in LA. You know, you can't go to LA without giving Florencia their respect. Now there was a lot of bottles from different barrios in Nellis, but it seemed like the LA car was probably the biggest. There were several 18 streeters, Glanton, um, of course you had uh, Playboys, Florencia, um, and several other gangs, you know, I could sit here all day and name a list, man, but that ain't my, that ain't my get down and that's not what I'm supposed to do. Um, but this Volta stood out to me amongst the rest because at the young age of 13, 14 years old, he was already rocking an F-13 on his face. And I remember he was the only one doing that. You know, you, I had a 14 over my eye and there would be several individuals with like Sur or North, or whatever the case may be. Um, they were called eye busters and everybody wanted you to know exactly where they were from and what they were representing because that was the get down. That was the era of the 90s. You know, it was all about gangbanging. There was nothing else. That was the issue. It was nothing but a G day, baby. Locked out homeboys going crazy. What are you? We were going crazy, right? That's all it was. Um, but this guy was going the extra mile. He definitely wanted everyone to know where he was from. Now, when he gets to my compa Kennedy, um, I automatically seen him as a target. Um, and the reason being is this big F-13 on his face. Not only was it an eye buster, but I felt like he was going to be the high power, play the high power role. You know, the super Sureño role. We had super North Indians and super Sureños. These guys had this label placed on them because they were the ones that we felt were just doing too much. You know, all sad and shit, creased up from the peace up. You know, already know what I'm saying. And these bottles would get in there and they would try to push their politics and their high power movements and uh, just get everybody in a wreck. You know, riot after riot after fighting. Um, and sometimes the program would be going good, and then you'd get an individual like this. He'd come from Nixon, which was a lockdown unit, which was basically everybody, every that was a South Sider unit. Everybody that was placed in there, they came, they came back with instructions to move on us. And we knew that. You know, their whole get down was to catch a level B so that they were not deemed Leva, so that they could uh, you know, go to another place like Fossil, TS, or wherever the case may be, and present, look at I was getting off on the North Daniel. See, I handled my business. I don't know about the mother motherfuckers, but I did mine's, right? So when this guy pulled up from Nixon to uh, Kennedy, which was a clump out there, um, I automatically assumed he was going to be with that program. Um, so I got out a couple of homeboys, the homeboy Smiley from Hanas and Puerto from San Juan. A couple other homeboys, I'm like, hey, we got to so keep your eyes on this out there here. This about the moves different. You know what I mean? And so what do you want us to tell him? You don't say a fucking thing about me. Keep your eye on, on him, right? Um, Tony Bronco shit. They're about to might be to what degree. I don't know. He might come in wearing a, you know what I mean? Just watch him so anyways he comes in and uh i remember the first day spiky hair didn't look like your traditional south side other than the tattoo um he had more of that northern flavor you know fade spiky hair flat top type hair um and i remember you know his first day in the day room i walked out there i'm sweeping and i'm watching him going in pinchy broom because i'm about to 
this out of this game? You know what I mean? I'm gonna knock your motherfucking spikes off. Um, and he goes, what's up, bitch? And I said, what's up? Now, we didn't, back in them days, before you identified yourself, um, you kind of kept it quiet, man. You kept it professional. You know, because it could pop off at any time. There was a lot of individuals, if you told them where you were from, they'd feel disrespected. Oh, sh don't talk to me, fool. And then it'd be, you know, on. I wasn't that type of individual. It wasn't, you know, um, fuck you. And, and nah, it was none of that. It was all business, man. Nothing personal. I just want to go home, man. Eh? That's all it was. You know what I mean? Spencer, you can have all this, bro. This is Lord. This is you. This is weird here, homie. This is Sela. You can have all, every bit of this, homie. I just want to go home. This is good. Just go home. Gar, what? I want to go home. No, you're not. Yes, I'm not. <laughs> and then I was stuck. Um, so I remember sweeping that day. He's like, where you from, homes? I said, Norte. He said, that's right. Sur, homeboy. Florencia gang. The way he said it, I didn't take it as a threat. I didn't take it as he was trying to punk me. Um, he was just merely letting me know where he was from. And I respected that. I said, that's right. He said, they call me crazy boy. Mucho gusto. I said, all right, Skinner. At that time, I was Skinner. Now I'm Gunner. You know what I mean? Because I'm too pissed. You know what I mean? It's a long story. But at the time, it's Skinner, people. Right? Skinner. So, uh, immediately, we took a liking to each other. Because I think that standoff right there of just, you know, the way that he hit me up, I let him know exactly. He let me know exactly. Then we gained a, uh, there was respect there. A lot of respect. Um, so, eventually, over time, you know, he got adapted real quick. Got into his, uh, his, Ranfla with his people, um, but we chop it up all the time. He was a very, he was a joking guy. He liked to play practical jokes on people. I'd see him always laughing, smiling, giggling with his homeboys. But when it came crunch time, when something was really serious, you know, because they would always get into it with the Africanos, the Crips, they always had tension there. Um, I would see him, he was on the forefront, he was ready to go. And I just seen it from the, from the way, you know, the body language and stuff. Um, and I used to chop it up with him. He ended up becoming a porter as well. We'd be sweeping. I'm in the day room and I'd be like, what's up, crazy? Were you going to get off with Africanos or what? He'd be like, shit, anytime, any place. But he, and we'd joke and, and tell stories. Um, and I seen him. I seen him in several situations handle his business. Um, one thing he told me, and I always take it to, you know, take it to the motherfucking heart was he was like, hey, look, I don't care about you bottles, man. I ain't tripping off you guys. He goes, I got too many enemigas right here or enemigos, um, to be worried about you. Yo, he goes, you know, uh, 18th Street Playboys, those are my enemigos. He was like, you, um, you know, I'm told, you know, I know what's up. He goes, but you ain't never did nothing to me, so you ain't never killed any of my homeboys. You ain't never hurt me like that. He goes, you know, until that day comes, oh, then we'll get off. We'll get off where we're mad at, but I'm not tripping. Um, so I seen this guy go to the square area. And unlike a lot of people um, that would wolf and talk a good game, you know, when they went to the square area, they never really handled their business like up to par like what they would say and this went on both sides north and south there'd be a lot of high power woofing in the caja if you went to the oil a lot of autos when i see you in the square i'm gonna crack your pinchy head open right so i was scared i'm gonna fucking fuck you behind the bend what i mean fuck you up right autos would just be talking a lot of shit but when it came crunch time like i said autos folded up like a motherfucking wheel i going out the door to a black of the tail right they just they were they weren't doing nothing so um, this guy was different. He had got into it with the Vata from 18. But to what degree of getting into it? The highest degree. Um, there was words said that they had, they had known each other from the streets. There was tension. And this Vata from 18 was actually on a compa called Washington. Um, Washington was mostly comprised of a lot of Mexican nationals, meaning paisas, non-English speaking. And then there was some Southsiders over there, of course, Vatas from MS or whatever were over there. Um, but it was more, they had English as a second language classes over there. It just was comprised of mostly Mexicano. Um, so these Vatos were kind of kept away from the school area because they went into their own classes because they couldn't speak English. So that's how that was. Um, so this Vato, uh, a crazy boy, every day he took him up at also to school. Mm -hmm. I, that ain't even allegedly. That's facts. In hunt for this one guy, man, that I guess had did something to him on the, on the streets. That's the type of individual he was. That was his mentality. That's why they called him Crazy Boy. He never stopped. He was like Joe Pesci from the movie Casino. I'll split your fucking head wide open. And if you didn't beat him with the gun, you better beat him with the bat. Nicky Santoro, right? That's how he was. Every day, he took the penitentiary chance of getting caught with the pedazo. To where he put it? I mean, one can only wonder. Does one, right? But he definitely took it every day to school. I knew it. I would see him in the, in the latrine area. That was the bathroom. We called it the latrine area. 
I'd be like, what you doing, bro? Shit, you know what I'm doing. I'm getting ready for school. I said, damn, you're taking a big old masa, huh? This is for la raza. I said, ooh, shit. He was, he was hooping something, right? Or to the highest degree. Anyway, so he would go to school here. Eventually, he did catch up with this guy and did do exactly what he intended to do. Now, did um, he flatline this guy? No. You know, we're young kids, man. You poke and scrape, scratch and pull. Um, he didn't really put metal in him, but he definitely attempted to and tried and did succeed in fucking freaking that Davato out. That was running and gunning and falling and yelling and pushing and cussing. They stand back, homeboy oh crazy kid, Boston. Crazy boy was definitely crazy. Now, I gained a level of respect for him, which is the reason why I say he's one of the hardest South Stars I've ever met. But his body as a whole, man, represented well. You know, the LA car was always deep. You know, there was always so many of these bottles. Um, and they have a certain persona. You know, even Southsiders from, say, the 805, um, the IE, um, you know, San Bernardino, Riverside, San Diego, all them areas, there was always tension in YA between them and the LA car. You know, we were in their backyard. We were in their home. So they felt they had to put it down a certain type of way. Um, even with their own gente. Los was always top tier, you know, and everybody looked up to LA. You hear LA, oh, Dr. Dre? Just give one easy E, right? You, that's what you automatically assume. Um, but these guys, like I said, for the most part, man, um, a lot of them were doing their thing. Crazy Boy was, was the one that I knew was a man of his word and would do exactly what he said because he was representing Florence Ave, Florencia to the fullest. That's why I gained so much level of respect for that water because of that one individual. You know, in life, I heard, you know, of course, he got out and got straight to it. Now, a lot of people that have been YA, that are YA, been to YA, that are YA babies like myself, Dubs, um, so many others. You know, there's so many others um, right here on YouTube that have actually did time and see YA that could tell you. That could fucking identify with the Gladiator Wars. That could identify with the Get Down. Um, a lot of us didn't make it. Okay, I'm a very rare jewel. Dubs is a very rare. I mean, I he did, he did a life beef. You know, I did life on the installment plan. I was in and I was out. I was out. I was in. It was like fucking a torta. You know what I mean? I was, I was trying to be in. Um, every one of us that was incarcerated there, it was like a family reunion when you went to prison. You ran into somebody that you did time with. Even now, I still talk to Baltas that I did time with on both sides, north and south. And we reminisce and we respect each other because of the things we went through no one else could ever understand. Um, it's unfortunate that Crazy Boy lost his life, you know, because um, he was a good guy. You know, he was caught up in, in the gang-banging lifestyle, as we all were. I mean, he was from Los. What do you expect? Florencia. Shit, the motos are with that shit. Um, and that's all he knew. Just like that's all I knew for several years. As you become older and wiser and, and, and more versed in this world, you learn more. You start to uh, uh, understand there's a little bit more out there. Um, that doesn't mean don't do what you do. That doesn't mean uh, be susceptible to the poison people are spreading. You know, that degenerates are out there spreading. Stop gangbanging. Do better in your life. Look, man, stop trying to stop that man from the course of his life that he has to go through. If that's what he wants to do, if that's what he's fully fledged to do, all you can do is guide him. You know, that's all you can do. You can't make him stop. You know, save your fucking hot air for a balloon, that's it. And then it might get popped. You know, I'm not going to ever sit here and say, oh, you know, I understand. You know, I don't want to see kids getting caught up and getting killed. And I'm, that's not my forte. That's not what I'm into. But at the end of the day, I went through, and some of those life lessons I learned, man, were, were for the good. They made me the man I am today. Um, so and I, I know that. You know, there was a lot of people trying to deter me from certain situations that I put myself through. But I, me, put myself through. You know what it is. So anyway, shout out to Crazy Boy. Rest in peace, homes. Um, one of the craziest Southsiders I ever met. There were several more instances I don't want to speak on just because um, out of respect for his familia. Um... And his, and his homeboys from his barrio. But let's just say that Valto was not the one. Don't step on his toes, bone nose, right? He was definitely down. It was funny because he'd do it with a smile on his face. He definitely was the definition of crazy boy, you know? So with that being said, that's the hardest South I ever met. I'm going to stick with that one. You know, I met so many others. You know, shout out to Negro from, Negro from Pomona 12th Street, Trooper from Norwalk, um, Little Man from uh, uh, Wilmas. You know, Babas from Asusa, Monstro from fucking F Troop. There were so many. Um, but Crazy Boy stood up on that top tier amongst the rest. No doubt about it. Rest in peace, homeboy. You know what I mean? That, Like I said, did I consider him a friend? I did. 
I did, man. We used to chop it up every day. Uh, would we have fucking killed each other if, if it came down to it? We would. Yeah, we would. And that's crazy to say that, but that's just the life we live. With that being said, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. I hope that you get everything that you want coming to you. With that being said, you already know what it is, man. Go out there and get it for your familia. I'm going to go try to get it for mine today. I got to go to work tonight. Spansa, I'm not theater. I'm going to be a motherfucker like, you do that, you do that, you do What are you doing? I ain't got it. Dar! You ain't got to do nothing. You see, I got the whole bang, bang. If you like this, hit that like and subscribe with your thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. Heavy's going to be the head that wears this crown. I'm going to continue to struggle and strive for what I truly and honestly believe in. And that's the coming together of all people, man. I tell these stories not to glorify certain situations, but to let you know the history of Chicanos. Because it's all part of our history. Bang, bang. The gun. Facts.